All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the channel for my weekly roundup of the previous round that was. Sorry, it's a little bit late. Uh, the unfortunate thing about a Sunday night derby, as shit of a time slot as that is, uh, I'm going to get home and then uh, I usually start at five on a Monday at work. So uh, last night just didn't have it in me. So it's a day late, but uh, here I am to give you my general thoughts on round three. We're still in the early stage of the season, obviously, and we're still learning a fair bit about where each team is at. I think we made some comments at the, the start of last round that, you know, this was a big round for a few teams, uh, potentially staring down the barrel of 0-3. Some of those teams avoided that, and some of them, uh, unfortunately, didn't so. So we're going to take a little look at uh, maybe where some of those teams are at going forward in this video. It was an interesting round, uh, like the rounds before it, where uh, there seems to be a recurring theme of momentum swings at the moment, and uh, it really seems to be the teams that can arrest the momentum when they don't have it and the teams that can capitalize when they do have it that will ultimately decide games there's a few games where uh, that was really evident in this video I'm just gonna go through you know game by game my general thoughts are you know depending if I watch the game or not and I'll give you a little rundown of what I thought of it this video like so many other videos on this channel is brought to you by our sponsors manscaped.com if you want 20% off and free shipping on their great male grooming products you can just head to their website manscaped.com use the code true 20 all caps all one word at checkout they've got a great selection of uh, male grooming products not just the shaver and stuff like that but uh, liquid formulations as they call them to round out your grooming routine so if you want more details on that check out the link in the description of this and you can find the discount code down there as well so the first game of the round we had was the uh, hotly anticipated clash between the dogs and Sydney two good teams from last year and two teams expected to be really good this year as well ultimately the doggies ended up getting the win by 11 points and it happened to be 11 behinds and I think the narrative around that was that the dogs really had their opportunities to put Sydney away but couldn't quite put it on the scoreboard and ultimately that left the door open for the Swans I was watching the last desperate five minutes and uh, you know Sydney seemed to get a bit of momentum back ultimately though they just couldn't generate enough opportunities they had nine goals six so just 15 shots on goal compared to 26 from the Bulldogs so all in all a bit of a scratchy performance from the Dogs but they avoid going 0-3 which uh, I'm kind of glad about to be honest because I think they're a, a good team and I'd hate to see their season ruined on the plus side for them Tim English is a player that uh, is getting a little recognition now he's copped some criticism in recent years, uh, you know, for being a ruckman that probably doesn't contribute enough. But I think I've always thought that was a little harsh. And it's good to see him, uh, at least statistically, probably having his best year to date as well. So that's a huge plus for them. For the Swans, it's a tough away loss against a, uh, a really good team, in my opinion. So they can shake that off and look forward to next week. Then Melbourne played Essendon on uh, on the Friday night, and uh, this was one of those games where Essendon was staring down the barrel of 0-3, and that's what ultimately happened when they went down by 29 points in this particular game. And Unfortunately, it has become a game of Essendon, who were currently on the bottom of the ladder against last year's reigning premiers, so this was uh, likely to happen, in my opinion. And Essendon have a bit of adversity. I think Merritt going down for six to eight weeks as well uh, is a big blow. He's obviously one of the most important players. Not too much to really learn from this game. I think Angus Brayshaw did have have an outstanding game, uh, 20 marks. I don't know if that's some kind of record, but uh, it's probably the most that I can remember in a football game. Other than that, Wiedemann kicked four goals, which is uh, good for him. He's uh, obviously sort of on the verge of becoming best 22 there. Um, so that's a great sign for their future key forward. Peter Wright also continues his uh, his really good season as well. I feel like he hit a purple patch at the end of last year and he's become a very, very good recruit for Essendon, who they took as a bit of a salary dump from Gold Coast a couple of years back. So there's a bit to work with there for the Dons. Then we had the showdown, uh, which was probably the, uh, the definitely the Maybe the game of the round, I would say. There was a couple of good games, but uh, you'd have to give it to this showdown this week. Adelaide obviously winning after the siren against Port Adelaide. Jordan Dawson's kick didn't look too crash hot off the boot. But uh, as I said on the Drew Footy Show on Drew's channel, like there seems to be some sort of vortex the ball gets caught in. And if you're playing port and the siren's already gone and you're kicking to win the game, the ball's automatically going to go through. It was an amazing moment, a huge win for Adelaide as well. I think they're a team that's sort of fighting a little bit out of their weight division when you compare the uh, the relative experience of both of these teams there. Rebuild seems to be going well. I've made this comment before, but to have a bit of reward for that by winning the showdown for which, uh, you know, the, the power are obviously a good team, making two prelims in a row, this is a big win for their confidence. For the power, I'm not ready to write them off just yet, but at 0-3, it makes it really, really tough for them to uh, to be looking up at the top eight and thinking, gee, we're not too far off, you know, eliminating ourselves from contention here. They've got the Demons next week, and then after that, they've got Carlton at the MCG. So potential to go 0-5, and uh, I don't know how many teams have gone 0-5 and then made finals. I know Sydney did similar in 2017, but... 
the season could have get away from him, and I don't know if their injuries are a good enough excuse for you know going down to a rebuilding side like the Crows. Next, we had the expansion cup. GWS uh, dealt the Suns a 26 point defeat. Again, how much can you really take out of this game? To be honest, the Giants finally notch a victory. I think from a positive sense for them, Canelio seems to be regaining some form. It's great for my fantasy team, but uh, also good for him as well. He's a player that I like. Uh, and he's an important player going forward for them as well. He's on a big contract. He needs to start repaying that faith, and uh, it's good to see him find a bit of confidence. Collingwood played Geelong, and uh, we did live stream this on the channel as well, and uh, yeah, another contender for Game of the Round. Absolutely outstanding effort from the Pies, another team that's probably you know bat batting above their average a little bit in terms of how well they're playing for a pretty young team. Their pressure is immense, and uh, again, as I said on the Drew Footy Show, I think that they're probably just struggling to sustain it for four full, full quarters, which is totally understandable when you're coming up against a veteran side that Geelong were. So it took a mammoth effort from Jeremy Cameron. He was outstanding. I think keep five or six, including you know most of them late in the game as well. So Geelong just overran them, but gee, Collingwood have impressed me, and uh, I'm still pretty bullish that they can make finals this year. Next, the Lions annihilated North Melbourne by 108 points up at the Gabba. This game came as no surprise for me. I think I tipped it as the uh, the biggest margin, or close to the biggest margin, uh, that I expected from this round. And Brisbane made absolute mincemeat of North here, and it kind of takes the gloss off a little bit of West Coast good effort last week, where I thought North were pretty poor, and they carried that poor form into this week as well. So for the Lions, they're building a bit of momentum. You know, Charlie Cameron had two goals, six. You, you know, if he's a bit more accurate this game blows out even more so the Lions look on the pace so far for the top two once again and it's going to be a very good battle next week when they take on the Cats at GMHBA. Now we're into the Sunday games Carlton played Hawthorne this was one of the most hotly anticipated games from this round and uh, it, it delivered really in Carlton sort of continuing this trend of uh, having really big quarters. I think they kicked uh, seven goals to one in the first term and the game appeared almost over. But I was reminded of uh, a couple of years ago where Carlton got out to a similar lead against the Hawks. Uh, I think it was about five or six goals and Hawthorne ended up coming back and winning. And history almost repeated itself in this game where Hawthorne really clicked into gear and it looked like Carlton were all at sea. Maybe a bit of fatigue in there as well. But again, we're seeing this trend of momentum swings and I personally feel the 6-6-6 rule is certainly having an effect on that. You know, in previous years, you could throw a man behind the ball. It's a little bit harder to do that when you start every stoppage with six defenders and six forwards. But a really big win for Carlton. I think both of those teams have a good chance to be around there in September. A little bit more convinced by Carlton up to this point, but you know, between them, both of those teams are playing like top four to six contenders. Over the next couple of weeks, the Blues have the Gold Coast Suns at Metricon, uh, and then they've got Port Adelaide, a struggling Port Adelaide at the MCG. So, you know, they're a red hot chance to go 5-0. and And if they do that, You'd be very confident about them playing finals this year. Next up, the Saints played at Richmond and ended up getting the job done by five goals. Another good game where the Saints sort of kicked away late, but it was an even contest for most of the game. I found these teams pretty hard to split going into it. I actually thought that Richmond had probably played to a slightly better standard than the Saints this year. Uh, I was pretty critical on the Saints, even though they won last week. But it was good to see them uh, find a bit of form. And gee, Max King really seems to be finding his groove. I think he just broke the record for kicking four or more goals in a game. He's done it five times in his career. And it's only taken him 41 games, which was quicker than uh, Buddy Franklin and I think maybe Josh Kennedy as well. But that just goes to show the, the effect of having, you know, a key forward who can just clunk it. You know, you, you send the ball in long and deep. Doesn't necessarily have to be pretty, but when you've got a key forward like that, uh, that can ultimately make the difference. And still a bit of work from both of these teams to really prove to me, at least, that uh, they're, they're a top eight team. But while the Saints cop criticism, you know, particularly from me for losing to Collingwood in round one, they've beaten Fremantle in Perth and they've beaten Richmond. So ticked a couple of boxes there and maybe they can build some momentum going forward. Then finally, we had uh, the Western Derby, which turned out to be uh, quite an ugly affair for my West Coast Eagles, unfortunately. Going down by 55 points, I correctly predicted that. Uh, I tipped Fremantle by 55 points once we had some sort of idea of the teams we we're going to put out there. I kind of, as an Eagles fan, pretty happy to write this off as a mulligan, to be honest. Like, watching the game, it looked really evident to me that uh, even in the second quarter, the players looked tired, really tired. When you factor in half the team had COVID last week, I, you know, unfortunately, we're not in the position where we can rest players if they're not quite feeling up to it, and we're carrying a number of players who are coming back from injury as well. So the Eagles could have played better. It was the worst performance of the season so far. But again, when you make 14 changes one week, you know, 10 or 12 the next, and you've only had six players play all three games so far, it's impossible to get some continuity. So not too much to read into for the Eagles, I don't think. Fremantle, on the other hand, uh, sort of worked their way into the game. It was uh, not pretty in the first half, and then they sort of uh, were able to assert their dominance. And it's, it's worth noting as well that they have several really important players. I think Sean Darcy is close to their best player these days. 
Um, Alex Pierce got injured during the game. Sarong was uh, missing as well. It really gave the Eagles just one target to nullify. That was Andy Brayshaw early, and they did a good job of that before inexplicably taking the tag off. I'm not sure why. So while I don't know how much you can really read into it just yet, uh, at least Fremantle would have built some confidence, and they've got a big game next week against the Giants because uh, if they lose that, then they're probably you know kidding themselves about finals in my opinion. But with some key players to come back, Fremantle, uh, they've still, they can still get a lot out of this year. Momentum can be built. They're still a very young team. So while I think they could be playing better, it's a long season and uh, they can certainly improve over the stretch. But anyway, guys, that was my crack at a, uh, a round three reaction. Let me know in the comments uh, what, your, what you learned from this round. What was your favorite game? What are some of my points that you agree with and disagree? Let me know in the comments section below. As always, guys, I'll be doing my Just the Tips video. It uh, should be out Wednesday this week as well. So uh, that should be tomorrow by the time this video comes out. So looking forward to seeing you in there. Hope you're enjoying the content and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.